Hi, welcome to Friesland First Reformed Church Online. My name is Darren, I'm one of the pastors here, and thanks for being with us today. This week, Pastor Rob continues our series in the book of Psalms, and we are digging into Psalm 40 today. And it's gonna be a little bit different than our normal just message. There's gonna be some singing and songs uh, dispersed through this message as well. But again, I was in the service this last weekend in our live service, and it was a really great message. It was encouraging to my heart, and I pray that it's also encouraging to you. We have a lot of great things in store today, and I just pray, like I said, that you grasp everything that God has for us today. As we get going, would you please join me in a word of prayer? God, you are good, and you love us. And David was a guy that wrote many of the Psalms, and we sit on the other side of Christ coming into humanity and you revealing your plan that you were even speaking through David oh, so many years prior. And David was getting it even though he wasn't perfect. And I just pray that we get your message to us as well. Lord, give us ears to hear and a heart to listen as Pastor Rob brings our message this week. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Here's Pastor Rob with this week's message. And our message is going to be a, a little bit different structure today. We're going to do sort of a scripture and song sermon as we unpack Psalm 40. So I'm going to invite you to go ahead and find a, some version of the Bible. If you dig into the bulletin, um, it'll be the New Living Translation. It'll be the main one I'll read out today. Um, you can follow along in the Pew Bible if you want to. Get on your phone and get to the Psalm 40 today. Uh, so many of the Psalms, as it's noted in our English versions, are, are for the choir director. This is another one of David's Psalms, and it wasn't meant to be just this private meditation. He, he wrote this with the intent that it would be used in, in public worship for God's people. And so as we move through Psalm 40, we're going to divide it into four different sections and think about that theme, that, and then we'll sing a, a song. Also, a modern song based on those same themes. Many of the psalms give us insights then on, on three different planes, and this one is true of, of, of Psalm 40. This is true of this one as well, because it's talking about David's journey and what he's experiencing. But the Holy Spirit also used David to point forward to Jesus, to the Messiah. And so many of these words and phrases not only speak of David's journey, but they point forward to Jesus and who he is going to be and what he is going to accomplish when he came to earth. But it's not just the past that it speaks to. It also speaks to our journey today as well. There's some practical wisdom for us here to be able to unpack for our lives as well. So let's begin with this first little section of Psalm 40. And it's all D's. We're going to begin with doxology. And doxology means praise to, to God. So here's what it says. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. All right, doxology. So he starts out with waiting patiently. So uh, who is good at waiting patiently? Mm -hmm. hmm? Is that on, on your, your list there? Because I'd, I'd rather shop <clears throat> like on Amazon and eBay and just bring it to the house. <laughs> but if I have to go and, oh, look, we have commentary, live commentary here. Uh, <laughs> If I have to go actually to the store, give me those, the self-checkout line, okay? I don't want to stand behind two or three people and watch them slowly unload their cart and then scan it and bag it and, and take payment. I, I want to do it myself. And then customer service, right? When's the last time that you had to make a phone call to get help and you get the computer and it asks you 43 questions and then finally, you get that message, we are currently experiencing high call volume. 
You will be helped in approximately 45 minutes. Don't you love those messages? And then you get the irritating loop of music that just drones on and on and on. And these past few weeks in trying to get stuff done, it just has drove me batty. Have you ever had your phone, like the battery died when you're on hold? And then even worse, I had it a couple weeks ago. I called in, i have been waiting for an hour for, to ask the, this, this company a question. And I hear a click, and then I hear a dial tone. It's just frustrating, right? And then there's the more important stuff of life that we wait on, right? Waiting to, to find a, a new friend at a new school. Waiting to, to hear back from that job interview that we went on. Waiting for that next doctor appointment or that scan that's been delayed again because of this COVID schedules. Will I ever find a spouse? Will I ever find a house is my latest question. <laughs> Fill in the blank. When will I? What are you waiting on? All potential sources of frustration, right? So is waiting on God any different, any less challenging? Because at times, at least me, maybe it just is me, but don't you get anxious and even angry at God in the same ways that, you know, your insides get stirred up when we wait for customer service? Or I just need this one part to make the car or the tractor work again. I need the new kitchen appliance. I need the refrigerator now, not in six weeks. I need the doctor report, the good doctor report now. I need my kids just to act a little bit more responsible now. I don't know, it seems like David is saying this, and I thought this too. I mean, do you ever feel like it's really hard to get God's attention? Because, you know, there, there's so many he's paying attention to, and he must be paying attention to 32 other million people besides me, and he's just put me in the line to wait. But I don't hear that, that message of currently experiencing high call volume. I'll get to you in There's a difference, though, between our earthly, endless lines and the divine delays of God. God knows the right resolution for us. Whatever it is, and here we see what God does. God turns toward us. He, he hears us. He already knows our problems, and the best thing is he already knows the correct answer, the solution. The perfect, personalized answer that we need. He knows what we need, and he knows exactly when we need it, this timeless, glorious God. The, the word picture that David gives us here is the, the mud. Have you ever had to trek through the, the mud and, and the clay? Have you ever tried to like walk up a, a slope of, of mud or clay before and you just slide all over the place? Often when we go on the mission trip down to Mexico and Texas, it's, it's been rainy, it's been muddy. And, and one time I had, I had to walk through the, the mud, and my boots were just caked full of mud, and then I got up on the roof and I almost slid off the roof because of all the mud all over my boots. Have you ever been in, in the mud with your boots or your shoes and the, the mud claims your shoe and out comes your naked foot? Your boot is gone. Circle, if you're paying attention here, you got something to write with. If you don't, prick your finger and write with blood. Uh, circle here what God does for us here in verse 1. He, he turned, he heard, verse 2, he, he lifted, he set, he steadied. 
And then if this wasn't enough, look at verse 3. He gives us a, a new song, a praise song. And he doesn't give it to us just to, to cheer us up. No, it's so that others around us can, can hear it, can witness it, can see there has been a, a change and that they can know that the God of heaven is alive and well and here and still does amazing things. God is trustworthy and true. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Amen? Thank you. Friends, we have to know that God wants to help us with more than just the grocery store line or the equipment breakdowns, with more than just the health concerns and the relationship dynamics between his friends or spouses and kids and grandkids. See, we, we all share this sin problem that God has the only effective solution. We're in this swamp and we're working to get out. But only God can lift us up. Only God can lift us up and out and steady us and put us on a rock. See, our mess was fixed when the Son of God was lifted up, up and out of the, the, the mess onto a cross. And he did that for us. And so David, as a shepherd, musician, celebrates that God wants to put a, a new song into our, our hearts that completely recreates us from the inside out. Even if a person is not musically inclined, we pretty much know music is a pretty substantial part of all of our lives. They, they don't make a vehicle that doesn't have a radio in it. I think you probably get in a combine. Combines have radios too? Everywhere, right? Music speaks to us. It moves us. It comforts us and encourages us. It's part of our lives. And now, especially with the, the internet and the smartphones and everything else, you, you can't escape music. As Pastor Darren mentioned, we are at the EFCA meeting this past week, and there's about 400 or so there, and we spent time to, to worship and to sing during uh, the, the various times in the meeting, and it was just glorious. And it, but in, in the first session, uh, I had a guy in my, my left ear that was making a, a joyful noise. <laughs> and for whatever reason, God allows that for now. But it, it, it was all good. But for the help that God brings to every person that David is celebrating here, every person that confesses the name of, of, of God and Christ, he remakes the heart. What we just sang a few minutes ago, that, that God wants to tune our hearts to sing his grace. the songs of this world don't offer us any lasting solutions. They may make us feel better and reinforce the mess we're in so that we feel like we're not alone, but they don't offer that permanent, joyful resolution that will carry us past death and into eternity. And God wants to write that on the inside so that it comes out as we struggle, as we have victory. Let's sing our, our first hymn of reflection here as we think about doxology. Let's just remain seated for this one, and we'll sing a couple verses of He Lifted Me.
doxology, and I'm going to move on to declaration with verses 4 and 5 of our psalm. Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud or in those who worship idols. Oh, Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Hmm. Now, what, what do you see when you look out at, at the world? Is it easy to find joy? When we get on that last 90 seconds of the news after listening to 21 minutes of bad news, but I think we have to remind ourselves that joy is something that we have to seek out and we have to fight for. It's not natural or automatic. We have to make that daily choice. Are, are we going to, to yield to our pride and ego and follow the ways of the world and worship the idols that they do? Or are, are we going to trust in the God who created it all, who sustains it all, and who has redeemed us from this mess. Because without the, the, that living God, that creator, sustainer, redeemer, God at the, the very center of our, our lives, we will never find true joy. It will always be temporary happiness that will need to be replaced by something or someone else. Many of you have, have trusted in Jesus Christ to be your, your Savior and, and your Lord, and you can make a list of what he's done in your life. But no matter how many years he gives us, it can be easy to get dead-ended in our joy, especially when those seasons of suffering hit in our lives. It, it's easy to to keep our eyes on Jesus when things are going well, but when the struggle comes, we get our eyes off of him. There's joy that comes in that initial time when we give our, our lives over to him, when we first commit our lives to him, and there's that change of being that hell-bound sinner, and now you are that heaven-bound saint. But to truly know the joy of heaven goes beyond the information and that initial transformation of our hearts, goes beyond that identity that we have in, in God. And then we have to worship Him and serve Him. If your joy tank is, is running dry, serve someone else in Jesus' name. Risk giving your time, your talents, your, your cash. Not draw attention to yourself, but to show off your God. If you feel your, your joy is just being depleted, look outside of yourselves to who God wants you to share his joy with. And he will provide it so that you can be filled and it will overflow to others around you. Here's, we're going to sing another hymn here. This is one of my favorites uh, from when I was growing up. And as hymnals change, they don't include all the same songs. And so this is one of them that's not in our current hymnal. But let's stand together and sing three verses of There is Joy in Serving Jesus. <laughs>
You may be seated. All right, let's move on to D number three here, dedication. And again, this is a song, so listen to, to David's lyrics, because this is, again, a huge lesson that we need to keep in the forefront of our minds here. Picking up reading at verse 6. You take no delight in sacrifice or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, look, I have come, and as written, as it is written about me in the scriptures. I will take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out, as you, O Lord, well know. I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. The, the way that Old Testament people kept their sin slate clean was to offer animal sacrifices over and over and over and over and over again. But David has become very close with, with God and through his practice of worship and sacrifice, he has learned that the sacrificial system was never meant to be permanent, only symbolic of something greater that God was going to do in the future. Taking the life of that spotless, perfect animal and applying the, the, the blood to the altar was never meant to, to be that, that magical act that takes care of the punishment due to sinners for their sins. From the very start, it has always been about the position and the condition of a person's heart before God. God has always been looking for people who will yield their hearts and their minds to His plans and His purposes. It has never been about what we do or don't do that gets us into God's good graces. And those Old Testament sacrifices were, were always pointing forward to that final sacrifice that was going to be made. That truly perfect, sinless sacrifice that was going to be made in Jesus Christ. Verse 6 through 10 here that we read, it, it's David's heart speaking, but... It is also Jesus' heart speaking. Previewing hundreds of years before he came to earth what he was going to accomplish, and what he was going to do, and how he was going to do it. That, that connection is confirmed in the, the book of Hebrews because in Hebrews chapter 10, it quotes these verses. It says, therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, and it quotes those verses straight out of Psalm 4. <laughs> Jesus took joy in doing the will of his Father. And Hebrews also celebrates the, what was the greatest joy that, that brought Christ's heart. In Hebrews 12, it tells us, because of the joy awaiting him, Jesus endured the cross, disregarding its shame. The, the NIV that we're maybe a little more familiar with the wording, for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross, scorning its shame. Do you know what, what, what was that joy? What was the joy set before him? You and I. We were the joy set before Jesus. We were the joy that drove Jesus to the cross. Renewed, recreated, resurrected sisters and, and brothers brought from darkness to life, from darkness to light, from death to, to life was his motivation. His motivation to get to that joy meant, though, that he had to serve sinners. He had to bless his enemies, and he had to adopt this hopeless delinquent bunch. 
Do you want more joy in your life? I think the psalmist just reinforces it. Find other ways to, to serve others in Jesus' name. Let's sing again. Uh, again, this one's not in our hymnal, but it's going to be a familiar tune, and hopefully you'll recognize some of the words as well. But let's stand and sing this one as well. Come, all Christians, be committed. be seated. Thank you for your wonderful singing this morning. Our fourth D is deliverance. This is a song, but again, these last lyrics of David's psalm also make a great prayer. Pay attention as David highlights especially two important things of God's ability to help and then our problem of, of sin. Verse 11, Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles surround me, too many to count. My sins pile up so I, I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head. I have lost all courage. Please, Lord, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to destroy me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame, for they say, Aha, we've got them now. 
but may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, The Lord is great! As for me, since I am poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior. O oh God, do not delay. Again, how, how practiced are you at, at asking for, for help? Because I think we get practiced even in childhood with the other line, right? I can... See? It's still ingrained in us, isn't it? Even as adults, I can do it myself. You become strong-willed and independent, and, and the world praises that attribute today. Just figure it out yourself. Do it yourself. So I have to ask you a question then. Did, do you believe what the, the Bible says? Do you believe what the, the Bible tells us, that we need help? That we are in sinners in need of God's Savior. Because it is easy to coast through life and just put up with all the junk. Most people in this world go throughout their day and night and they have no acknowledgement of God or who He is. It can, it can flow. That's the world's way to handle it. Do it on your own and just then seek your own version of justice. Seek your own version of what you believe is right and wrong and that's okay according to our world. <laughs> But you know, God has been doing this thing of life much longer than we have been here. He's got a better way. And it works. We have to let him, though, lift us up. We have to let him set us on solid ground and, and steady us as we walk along. And when we do that, the joy will, will come. And a song will begin to form in our heart and it will come out in some ways, whether it be a song or a thing of, of service or, or worship. Because the way God does things, he always gives us more than what we need. Will you close in prayer with me? And then we'll close up with a couple of praise songs today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God for all that you have entrusted to us. Lord, we, we can only read about some of those struggles that David went through. And we knew at times that even though you had chosen him from a very young age to be the next king, he still struggled. People wanted him dead and gone and off the planet. And if that wasn't bad enough, the, that savior that he was pointing, pointing forward to in, in Jesus dealt with some of those same dynamics. God had the answer, and he brought it here for us to see. And we put him on a cross. And yet in that, oh, oh God, that was the answer. That was the answer for us, that Jesus would be the, the si final sacrifice. Heavenly Father, help us to, to wait patiently on you. Because your plans and purposes are, are always the best. Help us to recognize the, the idols in our lives, the things that we have trusted that are, are so much more less sufficient and may make us happy for the day, but they don't truly bring us joy. Help us to identify the distractions in our life that are keeping us from you. Help us to deal with our ego and, and pride. Many years from a childhood, we have said, I can do it myself. And sometimes our reputation is, is like that, that that, that person, they, they want to do it themselves. God, we invite you in. We re-invite you in. Walk with us for your honor and your glory. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. And we pray that your time with us was blessed, encouraging, and also challenging in your faith as well. God calls all to him, wherever we are, at whatever station or place in life, whether we're running far away from him or we're trying to pursue him ourselves. But here's the deal. 
God loves us so much, no matter how far we are away from him, that he won't leave us where we are. He wants to bring us to that image of Jesus because that's how he created humanity. He created humanity to be his image to the world around each and every one of us. And wouldn't you like to be a little bit more like you were intended to be? I know I would. There's so many things about my life that I don't do perfectly and I get frustrated with myself. I'm not as good of a husband as I should be. Maybe I'm not as good of a stepdad as I should be. And uh, So many times I just want to pursue more. But it is through Jesus and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit that he can make us into the image of Jesus that we are intended to be because of the sin that is within us and the world around us that tries to chip us away from him and, and tries to bring us to making our own image, right? To be more like what we think we should be instead of what we're intended to be. Here's this benediction today from the book of Jude. And this is just entitled Doxology at the book of Jude. To him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. We hope you have a great week. We'd love to see you soon in person. Bye.